They are called the Zimbabwe Five. They are the last members of the South African security forces detained outside the country. The Amnesty Committee may hear their case soon at a special hearing in Zimbabwe. Jacques Poe takes up the story. Zimbabwe. Since black majority rule in 1980, a target of South African death squads. For 10 years, the apartheid state tried to destabilize its northern neighbor. But the Zimbabwean authorities hit back. In January 1988, four South African Defence Force agents were arrested in Harare and charged with murder and sabotage. They were sentenced to altogether 250 years imprisonment. To this very day, they are incarcerated here, the Chikarubi Maximum Security Prison. The fifth agent was arrested during an abortive escape attempt. Sammy Behan was arrested with an arsenal of South African-made weapons and explosives as he tried to enter Zimbabwe. He was sentenced to 40 years imprisonment. These men are the last remaining South African agents imprisoned anywhere in the world. The government of President Robert Mugabe has stubbornly refused to release them. They were part of um, three reconnaissance. Um, I think it was called D40 in the earlier days, yes. which is now being branded CCB. Um, I don't know who the... I believe Joe Fastier was the boss, General Eddie Webb, General Kurt Liedenberg at one stage. The five men in 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 who are detained at Chikurubi prison just now, as far as I'm concerned, are the worst traitors, and they deserve uh, to be treated as such. Uh, they are Zimbabweans who allowed themselves to be used by the South Africans for nothing else but for their own ends. The National Party government military, I would say they're a bunch of cowards, traitors if anything. They've left their people there, they've done nothing to help them. And certainly those men who were responsible for them have abandoned them. And that is the South African government, the former South African government. And they all these men something. Well, they've got rubber necks. That's what, that's what it is. They take, I think, to me, the generals have taken their money and they've run. The fat cats. Guy Borden, who now lives in Johannesburg, was also a member of the cell and admits his involvement in trying to blow up anti-apartheid activist Jeremy Brickhill in Harare in October 1987. I was hit by a lot of shrapnel, uh, mainly in my back. Uh, and in my legs. I was very badly burnt by the petrol. A lot of cars exploded. Um, and I lost my spleen, uh, badly damaged my left leg, broke several ribs. Uh, I was in a terrible mess. And I was ill for, very ill for at least a year after that. It took me eight months to learn to walk again. Why did you blow Jeremy Brickhill up? Uh, well, the reason there that I was given by Kit is Jeremy Brickenall was taking limpet mines into South Africa and his wife, being a Russian, was supporting him, taking the, the equipment through the border. So we had to stop him in Arari. It's very difficult to know how many deaths are on the hands of these uh, people. And that's because of the very nature of the secret war. The conflict in Matabililand cost between five and 10,000 lives. And at least one of the people who's in Chikarubi now, as a, convi uh, as a convicted prisoner, was very directly involved in the secret operation that orchestrated that conflict between ZAPU and ZANU and created such suffering in our country in the early 1980s. So many, many thousands of people have 
perished, many, many more thousands of people's lives were destroyed, homes were lost, people's futures were destroyed. They must confess and tell us the whole story. How they were recruited, when they were recruited, what else they did for which they were not charged. All those things have not been told. The men in Chikarubi have now decided to seek amnesty in South Africa and testify before the Truth Commission. The hearings will probably take place in Harare. Would you allow them to go and testify? No, I'm sure. I'm sure that the government would make those facilities, they could arrange for those facilities, and, and I'm sure government would be quite willing to have them testify. For them to sit, simply sit and rot in prison is really not doing uh, either them or society necessarily that much good. One of the prisoners, Barry Borden, grew up on a cattle farm not far from the Matopas Hills in southern Zimbabwe. The Bordens are cattlemen and have worked this land for more than a century. Well, it's terrible. It's terrible. And I think he's, uh, he's had his share of it a long time ago. He should have been out. I don't know what is holding, uh, holding back the works. It's a mystery. It's a complete mystery. Well, he's always so thrilled to see us. You know, you get to Chikarubi and you stand waiting for them to come down and you just see this lovely smile at this little window and he's just so thrilled to, to see us. Are you prepared to say to the Zimbabwean people you are sorry for what you did? Yeah, no, but Are you really sorry for what yeah, you did? Yeah, I am. Well, it is something I didn't want to get involved in. Um, you get put into a situation where you think, well, let me help get this thing out of the way and it will be over and done with. But unfortunately they make more mistakes and more mistakes and you try and help to get them away from your family, you're guilty. Has he ever said to you that he's sorry for what he did? Yes. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yes, he has. What did he say to you? I wished I'd never got myself involved. I wished I'd never done it. Has he ever said to you that he's sorry? Yes. He said he's sorry that had he thought that he was going to suffer and the rest of the people were going to suffer the consequences that they are, he would have thought a lot more deeply before he had become involved. Why do you think he did it? My personal opinion is that it was pure loyalty to South Africa. He loved South Africa. He had the greatest respect for the South African government. And I would say that is the total reason he did it. Personally, I forgive them. Mike about a year ago wrote to me and he said last night I saw the moon and the stars for the first time in six years that's incredible something that we take for granted the whole time um, they're learning a very hard lesson and they just want it to be over they must confess I'm sure they will seven years is a long time if they are able to tell the story the entire story of the activities in Zimbabwe, the bombings that took place at Nkomo Barracks, the attempts on our president's life, etc., and tell us why they did it, who was behind it all. And when the nation is informed of that, then I suppose whatever request came for their release would then be assessed and if the people of Zimbabwe felt yes we think now that they've told us the story and we understand why they were able to do these things and why they did these things we think we probably should accept the Truth Commission's Human Rights Violations Committee will hold hearings at the University of Western Cape in Belleville this week as well as in Sebukeng in the Val Triangle in our report next Sunday, we will have special features on women and torture and the Boipatung massacre of June 1992. We'll see you then. Goodbye.